I had this hardcover journal that I picked up at on clearance for about three dollars. And I started by removing the back sticker using a hot blow dryer. And I'm going to take some aluminum foil and wrap it around the inner pages to keep them from getting any paint. And I'm going to take some Wise Owl black paint and cover my entire book with one coat. Today I'm going to be using the Bell Orchids mold and paper clay. You can use hot glue or epoxy. The hot glue I'm going to be showing you later this week. But once you take your portion of clay out, you want to make sure you wrap up the rest of your package as it will start to dry with the air. When I'm using paper clay, I like to use a little bit of cornstarch and it just keeps my uh, paper clay from sticking inside the mold. This particular clay has a moisture to it. There is clay that you can get from Redesign with Prima, which works well too. I'll be showing you that also later this week. And that you do not need the cornstarch. By far the paper clay is my favorite way to apply my molds. It's a little bit more um, flexible and easier to move around, especially if you have fingers that you know have any issues you're going to want to go with the paper clay or the hot glue. So then I take a sheet of aluminum foil and fold my mold over and you just roll it back. And the mold basically falls right out. Now I wanted to make two of these for my book. So I'm just going to repeat the same process that you just saw. Now I'm now taking my new mold Avery, I hope I'm saying that correctly, and I'm taking out the bird that's in flight. These molds are extremely detailed. They come out beautiful. So now I'm using some wood glue and the key to this is you want to make sure that you have the glue all the way around the edges. You want to hit the whole surface but you really want to make sure that you don't miss the edges of your molds. And now I'm just gluing these to my book however I want to place them. I am not worried about glue that's overflowing out the edge because I'm going to be painting it. These are delicate. I had one of the, uh, the flowers fall off and you can just glue it back where it belongs. Now this is my S30. It's a small short handled Klingon brush. I love it for my small projects. And now I'm painting. I have allowed my clay to dry and now I am painting the entire thing again with black. So this is my second coat of black on the entire book. And now you can choose your colors. I chose uh, Vintage Duck Egg by Wise Owl. And I'm kind of doing a dry brushing. I'm not worried about full coverage as this gives my book a vintage look. Uh, you can do it differently. This is just the way that I chose to do it. And I'm just kind of going around my molds, you know, not being overly careful, but avoiding hitting them as I'm going to paint them different colors. So now I'm going in with some Spanish olive 
and I'm putting this on the, uh, the leaf part of my flower and the stem. And even with this, I'm not worried about full coverage. And that's what's nice about doing black first or white. Black is better because white almost looks like it's unfinished. But the black allows, if you can't get in every groove or crevice, it just gives it a vintage look. It does not look bad when you can still see the black in the background. It gives it an antique look. So I'm using Antique Villa on the, the flowers. Brown, brown works well too, black or brown. And now I'm adding white to my bird and I'm doing a dry brush so you can see all the detail in his feathers with the black. If I painted that solid white, you would not see it as pronounced that you can see now. So after that dried, I flipped my book over and I picked a stencil that I had which has birds and uh, branches and that type of theme kind of goes with the front. And I just took a dabber. And again, I'm not worried about full coverage as I want to keep everything kind of looking vintage. And I'm dabbing the antique villa with this particular stencil on the back of the book. So now I'm covering everything with the one hour Wise Owl one hour clear enamel. This is going to be my top coat just to set everything, make sure my paint stays in place. And I'm just using a Gen foam brush to do this. Now, once that was dry, I decided to add some gilding wax. Now this is a tip for you. I accidentally put a little bit too much gilding wax on my leaves, more than I wanted. I really just wanted a touch of it. So if this ever happens to you, wax takes off wax. So I just took some of my salve. I did want to uh, put a little bit more gilding wax on the back. But I went back to my leaves and I took some salve, which is a wax, it's a clear wax, and put a little bit on my gold gilding wax on the leaves and you just rub gently and it will pick it right back up. So I was able to lessen the gold on my leaves as I really just wanted a, uh, you know, a little twinkle of it. I didn't want a lot on there. So I hope that just made sense, but it's just a little tip for you. If you ever put a little bit too much of a colored wax, a clear wax will bring it back up. And of course you want to do that right away because once it dries it's not going to work the same. So here you go. Now you have this cute little book that you can display on a shelf. I hope you enjoyed this video. For the tutorials go check us out on YouTube or chalkitupfancy.com. Thank you so much.